Sexual Health Day 2024, celebrated on September 4, uh, focuses on the theme positive relationships, emphasizing the critical role the healthy, respectful, and uh, consensual relationships play in achieving and maintaining sexual health and well being. This year's theme emphasizes the significance of fostering positive aspects in various relationships, a cornerstone of sexual health. Our guest this morning is Dr. Anire Chima Oduko, public health physician. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's just take a primary look at uh, the, um, what it means when you say uh, sexual health. Um, sexual health is a state of complete physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being in all areas regarding sexuality. And it's not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. It um, suggests that people take a positive and respectful approach to sex and sexuality. It also suggests that um, people should be able to uh, have a pleasurable and safe sexual experience, free of violence, discrimination, and coercion. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So, so that's the working definition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we can break to, it up. Uh, we can uh, break it down. Yes, yes. I'm tempted to ask working definition. So what yeah. is one that is not working definition? The other ones that you can make up uh, to enable people to understand more. Okay. It just means that um, as regards, as human beings, we are sexual beings. Um, sexuality is integral to who, who we are um, as a male, as a female. It is also key to our reproductive um, function. So it's very, when we are talking about sexual health, it's important that people are able to express that part of themselves um, without suffering violence, without discrimination, without being forced to, and that they should also be able to enjoy it and it should be safe. So why does this even come to play? It, it, it suggests that people are not having that. The opposite is true, that um, there are people who um, who suffer um, maybe a negative effect because they express their sexuality. So there are people being raped. There are people who had a sexual experience and got disease because of that. And it's not also only about um, the act itself. It's also about norms, what society, gender norms. It's also, it's also, it also talks about gender norms, what society thinks is right, how relationships are formed, and um, who has power in relationships, and how this expresses itself in sexuality, and even in the se sexual act. Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to all those ones. Uh, yeah. let's, let's look at the theme right now, mm -hmm. this year's theme. What informed the choosing of this theme? I was. Well, I don't know what informed it, but um, what is the significance? Yeah, exactly. Of it? The significance is that um, healthy relationships, positive relationships, are a cornerstone to sexual health. Beyond sexuality, in you know, human beings, we are social creatures. Um, we have relationships with friends, with family, even at work. So we are emphasizing that having positive relationships. Is a, we should we have to prioritize it, in which there's respect among people, there's trust. We um, we we normalize respecting people, even when even when it's not sexual, because it has to start with what society deems to be normal. So we normalize having relationships where there is respect, where there's something called where people's boundaries are respected, where there's consent where we are kind to one another, it starts from there. Before it now goes further to, okay, um, in a rom romantic relationship, what are the, how should it be? So that's the significance. Normalizing respect, trust, and support in relationships. Who defines what respect is? What uh, should be normal and what should not be normal? Because right now, you talked about sexuality, and mm -hmm. it brings me to the, the turning issue of 
to be or not to be the LGD, uh, LG, mm -hmm. uh, the, the letters are so long nowadays mm -hmm. and they're LGBTQI. plus <laughs> yeah plus uh, so now mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about sexuality there are societies that say you know what we don't want this one that is not natural mm -hmm. there are societies that say uh, we want the ones that are not natural to survive alongside and these societies some of them are impressing upon this or are forcing some other societies who with that have normalized the natural one to imbibe what they see as not being natural so when you're talking about respect mm -hmm. who defines what should be the respect and what should be respected because if there's someone, for instance, who was sent to jail, was it in Italy or so, a teacher, because a young child, less than 10 years, wanted to transition into a girl. Mm -hmm. Less than 10. It is allowed in countries where they say, before you are 18, you cannot vote because you cannot take decisions for yourself and all that. You are not an adult. But they allow five years old to change into a different gender altogether. So... He was impressed upon to call this boy a girl, and he refused and said, this is a boy that I know, and the boy is just trying to transition, and he's been jailed. This is the third time they're jailing him for his beliefs. So when you're talking about respect, who defines what should be respected and what respect should be? Okay, um, sexuality is the defining conversation of our time. We can, go, uh, we can have this di discussion for the rest of today and we might still not meet um, eye to eye however however we am in nigeria so i need to um, um based on what is allowed in nigeria mm -hmm. um you asked about lgbtqi mm -hmm. so a people a people determine what they consider to be allowed normal in nigeria lgbtqi is still not um is, is still against the law but um, as human beings, we are guided by reason. We are guided by moral law. We have our reasoning. And um, I've had this conversation several times. And um, I don't want to put my personal beliefs here, out there. It's not my beliefs that should um, um, influence your own belief. But because we're in Nigeria, what does our law say? Our law says it's what? It's illegal. Uh -huh. So we follow the law. We have to live by the tenets of law. However, it doesn't mean that um, people that decide that that is their choice or that is how they express themselves should be treated in a, in a, in a terrible way or in an inhumane way. So positive relationships speaks about respecting other people and their choices. You may not agree with it, but um, there's something called respect, there's something called boundaries. While we as a people also continue to um, um, decide what is... Go on. What does the law say? What is morally right? Sometimes the law also can be wrong. Mm. What is morally right? What does, what is right? So if we even go to the... I don't even want to answer that conversation. Is it, well, like I said... You cannot avoid it because, <laughs> because right now when you're talking about um being responsible respecting others their mm -hmm. opinions and mm -hmm. what they like and mm -hmm. what they don't like mm -hmm. there are people in this world right now mm -hmm. clamoring for their rights to be recognized because mm -hmm. they only enjoy being with children oh, pedophiles no, no. <laughs> they, exactly yeah they are there so how do we respect them what what is the universal law that we exactly. can use That's what I'm saying. To, to respect? Universal law, laws of morality. So um, in this context, we are Nigerians. And one of the things that defines us is we are quite spiritual or religious people. Um, we are very spiritual people. And Remain with religious. Okay. <laughs> okay, let, let me... <laughs> let me okay, we are very religious people. But beyond religious, what, what is morally right? What is moral... I've had this conversation with... Um, some people, I, I, I teach a class on compre comprehensive sexuality education. So I just finished a project on that with university students. And we had this conversation in class. What do you think about LGBTQI? Do you think it is right? What, are, what do you think we should do about their rights? And so um, some, of the concepts, some of the things people said, some of the things even the students said was looking at what is natural, looking at biology, looking at science. Um, it is supposed to be male and female. Yeah. That is the natural order. So sometimes um, 
we also, in as much as, um, so this is what other people said. I'm not even saying my own opinion. What different people said. In as much as um, there's human freedom, we also need to be um, guided by boundaries. What is morally right, so we don't. Um, there's a problem there, even because <laughs> definition of morals mm. is changing. It's changing. It's changing according yes. to the society. If you go to America, mm -hmm. they, the way they define morals is mm -hmm. different from what we define mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So how do we deal? So with we, that? we need to have an anchor, something that is unchanging. And this brings us back to um, religion, which I have to mm -hmm. uh, fall back on. Because like you said, it is everybody has their own definition of what is morally right or wrong. So we need to have, we need to have a source of what is unchanging, even when even your own feelings can change. And in Nigeria, we have two main religions. We have Christianity and we have Islam. What do they say concerning... Um, we have to make it really because if we want to African traditional religion, African traditional religion, what does it say about such? What what does it say? So um, based on that, we as a people de decide. Okay, we should should we al allow this or not? However, um, what I'm trying to stress today, I, I think this is all about LGBTQI. Let's not I, know, it up. I know that, but yes. sexuality, it's sexuality, it's respect. So, yeah, sexuality is how you express yourself, how you feel about yourself. So um, we need to consciously, so the point I'm trying to make is, in that area, we need to be guided by a higher law. Not necessarily what we think, what we feel to be right. Sometimes feelings change, emotions change. You might be, um, as a doctor, a woman, sometimes when you're, you have mood swings based on the time of the months you are in. Hormones can change. Tell so me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so there needs to be um, an anchor, mm -hmm. a truth that is immutable on which we base our decisions on. And um, so I don't want to tell you what that truth is, but we need to be guided. So you mentioned African African um, traditional law. Um, we mentioned we are a religious community, um, society, Islam, Christianity. What do they say? And then our own laws. What do we say concerning that? Let's follow that mm -hmm. for now. However, whichever it is, every human being, um, um, no matter their stance or their beliefs, should be treated with respect. You don't have to agree with their decisions, but you don't have to also be cruel to them. So I've heard of people that you don't have to be cruel. Um, you don't have to, um, in as much as the person is not going against the law. So you, you did mention pedophiles. That is going against our law. You can't do that to a child. So yes, but people that said, oh, I want to, this is how I want to express my sexuality. We need to respect their choice, even if you disagree with it. But you know, it's very difficult, right? Because yes. there are cases that a few years ago would have been psychiatric cases, mm -hmm. but now they are, they are yes. rights. <laughs> and they're coming from, the sad thing is, they're coming from countries that have so much power that they wield on less countries, mm, lesser mm, uh, entities mm, like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. For instance... Well, not lesser entity, please. What, no, no, I, well, by, by, <laughs> by our, I don't know how to, to say it, we are not, but we sell ourselves short. For instance, the World Bank or mm -hmm. IMF will mm. not give you a loan unless you legalize the LGBTQ. And there are countries that have said, okay, we will not sign and collect this loan because of that. That is one of the loans that our president uh, went and signed and said that that clause was removed for Nigeria. I don't know how possible that is. Mm -hmm. So that's the difficult part of it. So while we are celebrating um, sexuality or sexual health and talking about respect, mm. it's a very difficult thing. Mm. So um, I think um, we should focus, those, like I said, those are deep conversations. That if we so continue, how do we navigate? So tomorrow? let's yeah, today let's place the emphasis on positive relationships. Mm -hmm. Being what is a positive relationship? Mm -hmm. A positive relationship is a relationship where um, you don't feel stifled, you feel respected. There is trust, and it's not just in romantic relationships. Even in families at home, at work, we are emphasizing that there should be positivity. So you are not trying to um, force another person. You are not discriminating um, against the person. You are not forcing somebody to do what he doesn't want to do. There's trust. There's mutual respect. Can you walk away? What? Can you walk away if you feel that someone is doing yes. something that you don't like? Of course, yes. And then you just walk away? Yes. That is what we are trying to teach people, especially um, children. Children need to learn that they have autonomy. My body is my own. 
nobody should be able to because like you said pedophiles you have pedophiles that want to desecrate children touch them inappropriately um, cross their boundaries so we need to start letting our children know no you have your bodily autonomy if somebody makes you feel uncomfortable and not just children even at work this um their sexual nuances a man will just come and put his hand on somebody a female's um, shoulder inappropriately or just tap tap her bomb or something like that and women do that too anyway. yes but it can be inappropriate and if you are not so comfortable with it you should be able to say please i do not i'm not comfortable with that please do not do that again and that is fine you should be able to treat people with respect there should be you should not try to undermine stifle another person so yes that's what we're trying to emphasize today on world sexual health day i well i do hope that we find that universal anchor because yes. that's the problem a universal anchor a universal yes anchor. a truth that is unchanging yes. our, which we can base our beliefs on and base our actions because, because sometimes walking away is not as easy as it seems mm. uh, because if you have that anchor you can always say okay let me look up to that you know let yes. it be that let serpent be that. on the cross that is <laughs> look up to when yes. it's written. That, yes. you know, that's how it is mm. because turmoils will come mm -hmm. problems will come yes and you're trying your best to stay focused and respect the relationship but you have to find that anchor how we get there is another thing we it's leave it in thing. your hands the but I, I also want to say things like um our gender norms um, we need to stop normalizing the we can't talk about sexuality without talking about harmful gender norms that undermine women and girls we can't talk about we can't have that conversation without uh, there are a lot of our gender norms right now that undermine women women um, how can you marry off it's okay to marry off a girl at that is not yet an adult but they don't do that for boys it's okay to tell a female you should go and get pregnant have a child when she's not even a woman, she's not ready. But they don't do that to males. So we need to start addressing gender norms that undermine women. We need to address that. It is it's rampant in our society. Like <laughs> no, it is rampant in our society. Yes, it and is. Then, it yes. is. But on, and on, on equal treatment of males and females, yes. even in employment, yes. um, um, giving pain, pain, um, females less for the same jobs, okay. things like that. Well, I quite understand that. Um, well, there's so much to talk about. There's let's so let's much just to talk hope about. that we can have a follow-up for these uh, because um, we've just touched the, a little tip of the iceberg, mm. but it was so rewarding that you were able to put light into some of the great issues that we have. We'd like to thank you, Doctor, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Okay. It is on this note that we are going to wrap up the show this morning. We've been talking with Dr. Anere Chima Oduko, a public health physician who joined us to talk about uh, uh, today, the celebration today, um, that is World uh, Sexual Health Day. That's what we're talking about. And this year we're looking at respect and making sure that we respect the boundaries of people and uh, respect their opinions about sexuality as much as we can. And the, the anchor we're, we're talking about, we hope that we find it soon, where we can all base our beliefs and laws uh, on. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes. And I thank you also for being a wonderful audience this uh, morning. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji.